We are definitely going to be chased by that angry guest that wanted to blow up the janitor. soldier's letter. Christ, that madman not only stole a Union soldier's uniform and murdered three innocent people, but also planned an assassination of the president. Thankfully, he's dead now, but who might have killed him? John, everything went as planned. Yes, my dearest brother, we have reached the finale of our masterpiece. I have managed to procure a uniform from a Union soldier and get all the way to the northern reaches of Massachusetts. On my way, I have slaughtered three traitors of our sweet land. Those, I'm not going to say that, N-word loving bastards that spit on our flag. I must have got lost in the local woods, though, and instead of Lowell, I found myself in some backwoods. Thankfully, God has guided me to find an abandoned inn where I'm making final preparations while saying my prayers. You know what that means? Yes, God is on our side, brother. He, too, wants our work to come to fruition. So the days of Abraham Lincoln and his cursed followers are numbered. I hope you've made it safely to Montreal. I trust God to protect you the way he protects me. God bless the Confederacy. God bless Jefferson Davis. James Wilkes Booth. <laughs> assassinator or brother to the assassinator of Abraham Lincoln? So, the Union uniform was just a disguise. Getting more and more mysterious. This must be what that disturbed janitor was writing about. Looks like he died a long time ago. They're definitely going to get up and come at me with those damn shears. As soon as I go into the other room or something. What is this? Hold on. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it might be some sort of stamper to like cut out. Um. Cut out, like, I don't know, certain shaped cookies or pasta? Like it rolls across dough to cut out certain shapes? I think that's what it is. I'm not exactly... I can't visualize what shape it would make, though. those black vines again. Which means I'm going to have to go back for the shears and take them out of the body to cut the vines. These damn roots again. They seem too tough for me just to break them. I can't deal with it with my bare hands. I need some kind of sharp tool. You think that's when they're going to chase me? Oh, the body's gone. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, I think I better move these back in. What? 
couldn't just get up and walk away. Ah! Let me go! Help! Help! I will leave you of your life, you Yankee bastard! You can't stop the assassination! Lick him of Peter's lives! That bomb's gonna go off soon. George Whitehead's office. Oh, too fast. hard. What about the rest of this place, though? I just realized something I never consciously realized before. The torch makes like little metal scrapey screechy noises as it moves around and jiggles. And it gets a lot louder when you sprint as you'd expect. Possibility, Norton. You're a judge, and you should know how to bend the law without breaking it. The contract states you can both hand over your shares without each other's consent. I'm sorry, George, but you signed it yourself. I never thought that bastard would try to outwit me, and that his demented spawn would sneak into the mine. What do you expect? The brat cannot inherit. We have to persuade that old fart somehow, or we'll end up with nothing! Did that really happen? Did they plot against my father and me? Bunch of keys can be used to access the reception and rooms 107 and 208. All I have to do is go back to the reception desk and find Gilman in the guest registry.
I just figured it out. I know how the inn burned down. Well, see, that just kind of ruins what I was going to say, pacing-wise. But anyway, you know how the inn burned down? It burned down because I lit every freaking candle in the entire place, including ones that are in some very unfire-safe locations. Anyway, I think I'm supposed to run now, but the thing is, I didn't finish exploring the room. Oops. Oh, fuck! Oh, I'm so dead. <laughs> I can't go that way. Okay, well, maybe this will load from when I was in the room. I hope. So I can explore it. Ah, heck yeah. Just need to move this chair again. Light that, put the scene back in its place, you know. Can I light all of these? Oh, hell yes! Oh, I love it. Ah, I would have missed something. Mr. Hyde, I have already written to you multiple times, but have never received a reply, so I'm asking again. Do you really not remember my brother Henry, who stayed at your inn two months ago? He's 31 years old, tall, slim, and wears glasses. He came to your establishment, seeking some peace and quiet after a recent breakdown. As a young artist, he was planning to paint landscapes. He's always loved the serene atmosphere of this region, and said that these mountains and forests struck the right chord in his soul. As I've mentioned in my previous letters, my brother never returned home. Blackstone was the last place he was seen. I cannot dismiss the possibility that he may have taken his own life, as it was full of suffering, but I hope that this is not the case. Maybe you can recall some detail that would help me solve the mystery of Henry's disappearance. Yours sincerely, Anthony Wilcox. Oh, I forgot to read the description on the side of the screen for that. Judging by the description, Henry seems like a typical melancholic. <laughs> but I wouldn't jump to conclusions and say that he must have committed suicide. Too many people have gone missing in these parts, and certainly not all of them were overly sensitive. Overly... To... I'm sorry, having... <laughs> Fuck you, Nicholas. Describing depression as being overly sensitive. Oh, yes. Yeah, I would have missed a lot in here. First newspaper clipping. Wednesday, September 13th, 1854. Blackstone, New Hampshire. Monday, September 11th. The sheriff issued an arrest warrant for Jacob Hyde, a mine and inn owner. Hyde is accused of murdering Judge John Norton, who, badly wounded, passed away upon arrival at the inn. A $500 reward is being offered. Okay, it's time to leave one of the brightest rooms I've ever seen. Here we go. Is 
this where I go? No fucking clue. Oh, hell yeah. Actually, that worked. I think that's just slowing them down. I don't think it's gonna stop them. Is it? Actually, I think that did. Whew. And something fell in front of the hole, thank god. webs. Madeline's necklace. Madeline. Who could that be? Was she a guest at the inn? Did she forget to take her necklace from her room? Madeline's earrings. Are those diamonds? They must have cost a fortune. And that Jacob? Who was he? Was it my father or one of the guests? If it was my father, that would make Madeline his... I don't want to picture that. To my dearest Madeline, Jacob. loud. Right. So, I have the key to three different places, I think. Reception and room 107 and 208. So we're on the second floor. Let's do 208. 208 is... Oh, 208's not on this side. It's not in this, this wing. It's in this wing. I don't know. It's one of these doors. <laughs> Wait, where, where do I go from here? Ah. Oh. I get back there. I guess I'll just forget it for now, see if it ends up taking us there anyway. Like, we probably need to go there anyway. What was the other one? Room 107. That is... Here on the left. Please stop making squeaking noises. Wait a minute. Oh no! Oh 
Fuck, that's what's making squeaking noises. No. There's actually a key in this. A written appeal. Uh, let's read it first. Yesterday I made a complaint to the reception desk about Mr. Hyde's son who had been making a lot of noise under our windows late at night. The child, left without any supervision, was arguing about something with a friend whom I could not see as he was hiding somewhere. Then he tried to lever the frame of one of the windows on the first floor as if he were trying to break into the room. This morning I saw the child with a black eye and a bruised lip. Now I regret ever opening my mouth. My husband had told me not to intervene as he said that it was not our business how others raised their children. But maybe you, Mr. Whitehead, will have the courage to reason with Mr. Hyde. I'm afraid he might kill his own son. Sonia huffed. When were those things happening? I can't recall any of it. I can clearly remember the sting of my father's belt on my back. I'd felt that often enough. I might have even got hit in the head with a metal buckle a few times, but this, I don't know what to make of it. Fuck off. that room was required in any way, you know, mandatory? Meaning, I think I should go out of my way to try to find a way to room 208 and not progress the main plot. Oh, I found my way up to 208, but the thing is, it's already open? Oh. Huh. Well, yeah, that's... It was 208, right? Yeah, 208. I guess that's just pointless. Okay, let's go to reception. What? Was I supposed to see something? Because I didn't see it. Which room did the detective stay in? Should be a spare key somewhere. It's a key to room 202. Should be next to it, probably. Faces. The key for room 203 is missing. But maybe. Maybe I can get there from room 202. I must find out how much Gilman knew.
That was definitely something. It just appeared. Silently, though. Didn't do a very good job hiding, did I? <laughs> where? Hold on, where am I supposed to hide? Right? Like, I was thinking back here. I guess not? Just... There in front of the painting? In that door? No, that's 203. I can't go in there. This is me crouching. I can't go any lower. Are they not going to look this way? I wonder if I could throw a distraction. Do you think that would work? Nope, that's not a thing. It seems like their idea of hiding is very generous when it comes to height. Like, I thought this would not be a consider a hiding spot all these places because my head is clearly over the things that I'm hiding behind but it seems to be fine I want to light this but I think that's a terrible idea is there any point in looking at that I need to get into room 202 that's right next to me right wait is it covered up by this thing I guess I'll try to go behind him. I don't have much time. This is not going to work. Oh, shit. It's 201. Angry boy. Uh. Are they actually making progress getting in here? No, they stopped. Okay. Not on the timer, I don't think. Gilman, open the door. We need to talk, just you and me. Greetings, Mr. Hyde. Cut the pleasantries. I know what you're up to. I don't really know why you're so upset. I really... You aren't the only hack who thought he could sniff out a scoop. But I'm not looking for a scoop. I just want to sort this out. 
There's something unsettling going on in this charming little corner of the world. So many people have gone missing, including your friend, Judge John Norton. I want to find him. Please. That's my sole motivation. You can shove him up your ass! You want to prove I'm responsible for his vanishing, because you're just desperately looking for a story that will get you publicity. The word publicity sounds strange, coming from someone specializing in sweeping things under the rug. Two years have passed since the incident in the mine, and many things still remain unclear. People lost their lives. Many others have gone missing since. And you act like it was just a minor incident. It was an accident. A tragic accident that cost the lives of my employees and ruined my business. That's all. Oh, I'm afraid that's not all. Ever since then, people have gone missing in the area. Many people, even guests of this establishment. Enough! I want you out of my inn by tomorrow. Do you hear me? Detective left something here. I think I want to read this diary entry too. The detective was trying to press my father, looking for links between the mine accident and the subsequent vanishings of inn guests. Father told him to get out the following day, but that didn't stop his investigation. Why was the detective so determined? What evidence did he have to back up his claims? The disappearances started right after the accident at the mine. I'm aware that the neighborhood isn't very safe, with all the forests, mountains, swamps, caves, and whatnot, but I don't believe that is all a coincidence. I also find it hard to believe that the explosion was a mere accident, even though Jacob's version was confirmed by the investigating officers. One of the locals told me that right before the explosion, Hyde had brought several barrels of gunpowder to his lot. I'm going to go to the mine and check the shaft for evidence that Hyde could have left there. The sheriff might have overlooked something, or he might have been bribed. Maybe that will shed some light on the disappearances. That's very interesting. One of the locals told me that right before the explosion, Hyde had brought several barrels of gunpowder to his lot. The detective went to the mine that day. Nobody knows if he ever came back. I must retrace his steps. There may still be traces of what happened back then. I... Vaguely remember the accident, but gunpowder barrels, missing people. What's happened here? My father was a cruel man, I can't deny that. But would he be capable of killing in cold blood? I guess I'll have to go down into the mine. Great. That's just great. <laughs> I should look for another exit in this room. Ah. That's... That's an ominous red glow.
Is it lonely in my head? Going mad. <sighs> Let's go. Oh my god. Ooh. Go, 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 go. Oh, fuck. Oh, wow, it's close. I don't know if that's gonna keep him out. <laughs> That was a really cool escape scene. I love that. <sighs> However impossible it may sound, Nicholas's journal helped me to crack the Soviet ciphers. But my joy turned out to be short-lived. In an unexpected turn of events, I had to track down a spy and try to find any hidden bugs along the way. This is how I reached the ruins of an old inn, where I stumbled across another collection of Hyde's thrilling memoirs. What the fuck is going on? Where, where am I? How? All of a sudden... <sighs> did, did, did someone knock me out when I was at the ruins? But why would they drag me here? And, and how am I supposed to go home? I'm liking this game more and more the more I play it. I see some tents over in that direction, some pretty large ones. Uh, I think for now, though, this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to try to find a way home. <laughs>